looks like the English are preparing yet another vacation to France. And when I say vacation, I think you all understand that I really mean invasion. But the reason that I use the term vacation is because for the English, invading France is basically a tradition. And it looks to me like this is going to be one of the longest vacations that the English are going to be having in France. This vacation is going to last for more than 100 years. But it looks to me like the French have prepared their border patrol. We've got halberds. We've even got some mace boys out front. We, of course, have the French king who's again going to be defending his throne from the English. We've got another two rows of halberds followed by a whole bunch of archers back here as well as some foot soldiers down the back. And then last but by no means least, we have a couple of spearmen. And for the excited English holidaygoers, they have, of course, brought some more halberds. We, of course, have some more men-at-arms back here. We've got even more men-at-arms back over here. We've got the king, the English king, on his noble steed with four of his knights in front of him to protect him. Once again, a couple more spearmen down the back and then the famed English longbowmen who are gonna have some pretty serious range on them. And is it just me or does this French king already look completely fed up? To me, his face is saying, again, really? But yes, again, really, really. Let's see, okay, so we've got some initial arrows going down. We got the macemen going in against the halberds. Oh my god, the king's horse has been absolutely demolished. Look at this guy. Okay, looks like we're gonna have a pretty big punch up in the middle and of course all the- Oh, wow, this this guy's really gone in quite a bit further than he should have done. It looks like we've got a massive scrap up in the middle here between the French and the English. It's not very clear who's gonna win this one. And all whilst this massive punch up in the middle is happening, of course, the English longbowmen are gonna be firing in. Let's see, where's that going? Oh, nowhere useful. Okay, it looks to me like the French might actually be winning this scrap in the middle here, though, somehow. So it might actually come down to a little bit of a skirmish between the archers. And yeah, it looks like the French did actually win that one, but there's only a couple more of these guys. And now look at this. We are down to a archer off. Now, this is where the English really should come into their own here because they are the expert archers. Wow. Where did that one go? Okay, that one's gonna hit. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's see. Are the English tourists going to manage to stay in France or are the French gonna push them out? It looks to me like this could go either way, actually. How many have we got? Let's pause this right real quick. Okay, so at the minute, we've got five English uh, archers and we've got, what's this, like six or seven French ones? Six French ones. This really could go either way. Okay, it's now four or five. Let's see. Okay, it's now three. Oh my god, it looks like the French are actually gonna win it. I don't believe it. The French have pushed back the English in the first battle of this totally accurate battle simulator, Hundred Years War. Now, after their initial victory against the English, it looks like the French are going to return the favor and have, in fact, booked a holiday in England. And this is the French turning up just next to the White Cliffs of Dover. They have landed in England and they are going to try and now actually capture the English throne. So what we have is we have a bunch of knights out the front. We've got more halberds down here. We also then have a nice little contingent of archers and then some standard foot soldiers and they are all sandwiched in between a bunch of these knights right here. And then we, of course, have our French king out front who is looking to expand his throne, not just from the French throne, but also to the English throne. Now, the English defenders have sallied forth to meet the French invaders at the White Cliffs of Dover, and they've actually got a little bit of strategy here. We have some men of arms over here with a knight out in front of them. We also have some more men of arms over here with another knight out in front. We've got a couple of pikes out front to receive these initial soldiers as they charge in. Then behind that, we've even got these halberds as well that are going to drop down and just be really heavy anti-large, so they're going to be really good at taking down these cavalry. And in a staggered V formation, we have these longbows either side. Now, what you can obviously see is going to happen here is hopefully what's going to happen is all of the fighting is going to be happening in the middle section here, which is going to allow these guys to move in this way. These guys will move in this way and these guys will move up and all of that should hold them in a pocket in the middle, which all of the archers should then be able to shoot into. So we should be getting a bit of a crossfire here from the English and of course the English king all the way down in the back here. So let's find out if the English strategy is going to work and if it's going to be enough to stop the invading French. Now bear in mind that the French are charging in here off the back of a victory. Okay, these initial jousts are going in. That looked like some heavy contact here. We've got some spears going in to deal with that cavalry. It looks like those halberds have done a really, really good job at chopping down those. In fact, actually, no, I tell a lie. The cavalry managed to survive way longer than I thought it would there. It looks to me like the French are doing really well here. Although the longbows now managed managing to get some early shots in here.
here. It's anyone's best guess as to who the ground infantry is that's actually winning here. We got bodies falling off of the cliff and the fight is actually continuing down here. Look how many of them have fallen down. Some knights falling off into the water. Wow, halberds too. We've actually got a battle at the bottom of this cliff and look at that. They're all just drowning. Let's see who's winning up top. It looks like almost all of the foot soldiers are dead other than the English king here. Can the English king close the distance against these French archers? But more importantly, are the French archers going to be enough to take down the English archers, which are obviously a lot more numerous over there? And bear in mind, there's still some more English foot soldiers that got stuck down the bottom of the hill that need to move back up. This looks like a convincing... Wow, he just got kicked in the back of the head. What a kick. The king went down, but he did a massive roundhouse kick there. And it looks like the last remaining French knight is down here, and he might just go through all of these archers. Look, he's got one of these big old shields. Oh my god, if this French jouster, if this French knight... Oh my god, I thought that the French knight was gonna go through the whole lot of them, but no. It looks like the English did manage to push him back and kill him, but it actually came a little bit closer than I was expecting it to. If that guy had killed all of them, it would have been pretty tragic. So the score is one to England and one to France. Now, having pushed the French off of the English shores and away from the cliffs of Dover, the English are now once again trying to make headway into France. They have just landed in Normandy and the English army is slowly moving its way up to try and make a beachhead against the French. And as you can see, the English army is on their way up the cliffside, but they have been met by the French army. The French caught wind of their plan and have set up an ambush. So the French have set up multiple positions of archers, which are of course going to be shooting down into the advancing English down here. We've also got a bunch of heavy French knights and also halberds who are going to go in and try and hold these guys up for as long as possible. All whilst we've got some heavy cavalry going to be charging directly into these guys. They're going to have no time to prepare whatsoever. And also the archers and the king and a couple more of these knights down the back are actually split off from the main pack. The English were not expecting to be met with such fierce resistance on the shores of Normandy. But alas, a taste of things to come, I guess. And also a more French archers down here. They're not quite MG42s, but for the time, they're certainly going to do the job. So let's find out if this French ambush is going to be successful in stopping the English from getting into Normandy, or whether or not the English holiday plans are going to be back on track, because this is turning into a very long war already. All right, away we go, and already you can see straight away the heavy cavalry just going absolutely piling in there. Now, I will say those French archers, I want wonder how much of that is actually just team damage. A lot of them are just shooting their own guys in the back, but it looks to me like that heavy, heavy cavalry has done incredibly well. Look how many bodies are here in such a short period of time. The halberds getting up here. We got more men at arms here. Don't forget we got the English archers and also some more knights down here, as well as the English king yet to even reach the battlefield, but it doesn't really matter because it looks like the English are making short work of these units here. The main thing the English have to be concerned with now is the makeshift wooden MG42s on the hillside here because not many of these English units actually have shields. So these French soldiers here are going to be making short work of these English units. And yeah, would you look, even though the French heavy cavalry is no longer actually on any horse, they're still doing incredibly well. But there we go. I think they have just gone down. We've got a couple of halberds left in here and it now once again is going to be between who has got the best archers. But because we have this distraction at English foot soldiers, soldiers over here. In fact, actually, these English foot soldiers are making short work of these French archers here, and not to mention the English longbows also coming in, making short work of these guys. And now look at this. Where is that going to go? Is that going to be a hit? Yes, it is. Okay, it looks like we are almost down to just a, a standoff between the archers, basically, here. Okay, it looks like all we have left is archers. That is all that is left in this battle. Are the English archers going to be able to do it, or is the advantageous position? I mean, these guys definitely do have a good position, but I don't think their range is helping them much. No, the, the arrows are going a little bit short, but they're still doing just enough damage, and we're down to the final French archers, and there we go. It looks like even though there was a fantastic ambush set up, the French kill box was not enough, but I mean, let's look at this. Look how many English bodies are there. They did kill a lot of English soldiers, and considering there's only a handful of English archers left, that was a pretty successful ambush, if you ask me. After two cons consecutive wins against the French, the English are now looking to seal the deal and bring an end to the 100-year war. They've brought every 
everything they have to offer here. They have their heavy infantry out front with halberds behind that and a bunch more heavy infantry with the king down the back who is eager to merge the thrones. We of course have the English longbowmen either side over here and the English have managed to catch the French off guard and the French are still not even fully deployed. You can see they are trying to fill out their ranks here but the English have started the assault before the French actually managed to get all their men into position. So we can see all of these French soldiers are still making their way out of the main gates here and have not actually got into the front line. We can also see we've got the French king who sallied forth a bunch of archers here and then up on the crenellations we have even more French archers. Whoever wins this battle is going to win both the thrones. We've got both the English and the French kings here. Whoever wins this battle is going to win the kingdom of France and also the kingdom of England and bring an end to the 100 years war. So let's find out is it going to be England or France that's going to be bringing home the W tonight? Well let's find out. Here we go. We got the initial attack. The front lines. Wow those halberds do so much damage. We got the archer shooting in here. We got some French light cavalry. All the heavy cavalry has been destroyed in battle through multiple defeats against the English but the light cavalry is still definitely going to do something and oh my god how do I even commentate this? This is an absolute punch up in the middle between the French and the English here. I'm not entirely sure. Once again it looks like the English king just got some massive kick off but has he gone down? Oh no he's still alive. He's still alive and he's parried that good effort. It looks like the French might just have the upper hand here. Are they actually going to push back the English here? I don't believe it. I think the French are oh my god that was a big swipe but he has gone down. We got a couple more French foot soldiers over here but I think there's actually one or two English alive here as well. So it looks like we're probably going to have another battle here where it is an archer versus archer competition. Let's find out who's going to win this one. Okay we actually do have one remaining halberd from this entire massive battle here. Look how many blue and red bodies are and yet only one English halberd comes out of it alive and he did not last much longer either. He has also contributed to the pylon. And now we have the last little battle of the archers. Wow, that guy getting headshot here, but it does not look like there's many archers left. It looks very, very balanced here, actually. Uh, I would say that it looks to me like the English have only just got the upper hand and only because this guy ran bait. This guy ran out in the open and took all of the shots, which are going to allow the English to get a couple more shots in here. I think that their range should be exactly the same. And I think we've got four versus four here. So this is a perfectly balanced battle. But these English soldiers that are just on the move over there are what's winning it because it means these guys are wasting the shots and it looks like it is one versus four now. It was a 4v4 and now it's a 1v4 but the battle has not ended. Ah, we've got one of these guys hiding in the tree here. Could you imagine if this guy actually manages to bag it for the French? Oh my god, especially when we got team killing like that. Guys, you cannot afford to be doing that. Oh, it looks like he's slipping around the side. Also, why is he so massive? Good god, that guy... There we go. And that is our answer. It looks to me like the English have managed to bag it and the English are going to claim the French crown over here. Even though all of the kings are dead, we've been through like 10 kings in this video. All right, that was some totally accurate battle simulator gameplay. That was the 100 years war in which the English did manage to merge the thrones. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel and you enjoyed that tabs battle, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon and turn on those notifications so you know when my tabs battles go. But most importantly, thank you very much for watching. I will catch you again next time.